gonna be a little touchy is quarantine. Between the contact from the confrontation down there, the passing off of the food, we're gonna check each other in the morning. Yeah. Um, you know. So Thank no specific God. quarantine. No, Thank we're all in God. it together. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanna make one thing crystal clear with everybody right now. That helicopter circled <coughs> three, four times and advertised for miles around that we have supplies. So be prepared that we are probably gonna get hit in the next 24 to 48 hours. That's mm -hmm. kind of how a secondary attack will come. Yeah. We're not gonna be fighting six people. Those 30 people you fought in the beginning, be prepared for those 30 people to come back. I just can't believe I let these people make me think that I was gonna get out of here. Their, uh, their hope was a little too contagious. I think I got my own spirits up too high. While Amber keeps an eye on the compound, the other colonists assess the remains of the supply drop. As far as that big box that was dropped, mm -hmm. you're looking at it. We have bread, crackers, cheese, tuna, apples, rice, cookies, flour. Vopa was supposed to take us out of here. Didn't happen. Vopa decides that they're going to give us supplies. Did they drop a crate of food? Yeah. From freaking 200 feet in the air. It freaking disintegrated when it hit the ground. We did not get a lot. We're down to nothing. I don't know what is in this box yet. Ooh. But no, whatever it is, it has to be secure. We have a oh. cellular phone with a USB hookup. Wow. Really? Reno uh, discovered an electronic device uh, Shows that uh, there's a, uh, the, the modern world still exists out there. Bopa. Bopa. Holy. What, wait, 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 wait. Holy. What? Dude, it, it's videos from our family members. Here's a video for Whoa. Amber. Here's a video from. from Bring it out here. Bring it out here. For George. Bring it out here. Michael. Bring it out here. Video for me, Sally. Looks like your sister. No. Diane. The colonists receive actual messages and photos from their families to test their emotional resolve within the experiment. I'm gonna go let Amber come down so she has a video. I'll relieve her. Oh, oh wow. Here. I will be with you in my dreams. I love you with all of my heart. Cyan. Hi, Cyan. Uh, we miss you very much. Go to your brother. My brother Langley. That's my lady friend on the right. Oh. And the one on the left, I need a new glass to see who she is. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Becca. We miss you. Hi, sweetie. Hope you're doing well. Uh, we're doing uh, just fine. Love you. George. Hey, George. It's us. We're. <laughs> I want to say how much we love you, and we can't wait for you to be home. Sister. We love you. Love you, Uncle Carl. Hope you're having fun. Next is Michael. Oh, my God. Oh, oh nice. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> How cute. They were cute. Oh, that's yeah, a great man. picture. The <laughs> Mike and Ego. Oh, Hi, Mike. Miss you. We love you. I love you, too. Goodbye. We love Next. Rena. Oh, we love you, we miss you, and we can't wait to see your face. Everybody sends their love. Good luck, Rena. We're proud of you. <laughs> I'm proud of you. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> After a disaster, when family members have been separated without communication for an extended period of time, any contact from a loved one invokes a powerful emotional and experiential response. We saw this after 9-11, when phone lines were down and bulletin boards were the only link people had to missing family members. My Sally. brother Jason and my oh, mom. Oh, good, I get to see your sister, Sal. Touch it. Oh, yeah, here we go. I don't cry. <laughs> I know you don't, yes, you but it's your family, now. so that's OK. Hey, Sal. Uh, it's me. We miss you so much. Um, mom and dad miss you, and we hope that you're doing good. <laughs> oh, my god. <laughs> I saw a teeny, tiny little picture of my sister, and um, 
It almost felt like just time came to like this screeching halt. <laughs> I was kind of useless. <laughs> I was just so happy to see her. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Watching Sally cry. We were all crying. I mean, there was not a dry eye in the place. Hey, that's oh my, my wife God. and kids. Oh. <laughs> that's my daughter. There's my son. I was real hard on him. Seeing him with him a smile makes me feel good. Him and I had a falling out when he was about 12. He's a good kid. And that's my daughter, Alexis. She's beautiful. Yeah, I'm always on her about her school and running up and down the stairs. Maybe I should just lighten up a little bit. That's Logan. That's my youngest son. And I told him he has to eat whatever he kills. <laughs> I think about the old way of life kind of scares me because I'm almost starting to forget about it, how it was, and it's so soon. It's only day 44. Being separated from him is very difficult. I love my wife. I love you, Elaine. I love my kids. I wish I'd have said I love you to my daughter more. This is the first time that I even get it. Be close to your loved ones. Grow up a little bit and relax. But I'm learning. This experience has changed my life and it will have changed my family's lives for the better in many ways. people's temperatures. Do you want to help me with that? I sure will. Okay. As part of the experiment, the colonists are checked for symptoms of the flu virus, including fever, congestion, and rash. A little smiley face. Oh, good. There. I have a smiley face. Nobody has the flu at this point. This compound has been our home. We've made something here, but it's been a struggle every step of the way. The place we're at is hostile. Get up, don't do it again! We have to go. There's no if, and, or but about it. It's time to leave. I've got a really bad feeling, and I just feel like there's just a storm coming, basically. I just, I can't even express it enough. Just the sense of urgency to get everything wrapped up. Before the Vopa phone call, the colonists were building a large Exodus airboat and a smaller scout boat in an effort to relocate to a more sustainable location. Our escape plan can't change at this point. Basically, scout boat is simple. Amber, you just got to wrap that up mm -hmm. like today. Yeah. If I can get the scout boat up and in the water, maybe I can finally lead this colony to something better. As far as the big boat, it's pretty much going to be most of our priority. We're going to need the prop taken care of, which I think would be George and Amber. Reno and Becca are working on the engine mount. I'm on the motor. Three. So I just finished the armament of the scout boat. We're going to have machetes, but this is a crossbow. We are packed and loaded, baby. I just want these people to respect me and to be grateful for the things that I've done. Hey, you guys, you want to give me a hand moving the boat? If we get, we're going to get in the big boat and we're just wandering around looking for, for a, a, a pie in the sky? No, because we need to get that scout boat and see what's in, in yonder shore. But we need to find out where the pie is first, and then we get, we get the big boat rolling in the direction of the pie. I kind of get a clue what it's going to be like moving that big boat because of uh, how much the little boat weighs. Keep it going. We got it. We got it. Up the ramp. Oh, we got it. Okay. And moving forward. Okay, let's set it down. We're getting close to the edge. Let's go to the edge. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay, all right. Let it go. Let it go. That's what I was saying. Go ahead, get in there. There it is. Seeing that boat floating on the water, it dawns on me 
The colony is now a naval power. Okay, Amber, you'll be the first to jump home. Hey, Amber! Yeah. All right! We Woo. got it going. So far, 30 seconds in, we are completely dry. I think we should definitely let it sit overnight just to make sure there's no slow leaks. And then we're going to be off looking for food. Hey! Freedom Hill, here we go. The scout boat is ready to go, and it's all hands on deck with the airboat. Sally gets to work on the engine. Reno and Becca start fabricating an engine mount. George and Amber begin forming the propeller. Michael makes the fuel. And DeVille works on a way to move the 2,000-pound boat 100 feet to the canal. The only thing we have to move something that big is our tractor. The first thing we have to do is be able to put some tires on. I saw these great big tires right next to the helicopter landing. Okay, I'll keep it from falling on me. You keep it from falling on yourself. Let's just let it drop right here. After arriving at the tractor, I realized that the front tires were underneath the rear tire section. So we had to remove those in order to be able to put the big tires in. I got two tires at the bottom that I got to use for the front. Right. So what I, I like to do, raise it up, put a little bit more, raise it up, put a little bit more, raise it up, put a little bit more. A little more, a little more. I think we'll need a little more weight. Well, my plan is to use uh, two four by fours and prop the rear up one bit at a time until we get the tractor high enough to put the big wheels on it. And go. Okay, it's starting to rock slightly, so... Right there, that's good. Pick your end up a little bit. Pick your end up a little bit. Okay. Go ahead and put a two by four underneath this. Stay there. The trio is finally able to leverage up one side to get the front tires out. Oh, this tire's up. This damaged tire is a problem. And without taking care of this problem, we cannot move the boat to the water. As night falls, Michael draws on his home brewing experience to fire up his still in the Vopa tent. The fermentation process is complete. I'm ready to start distilling. Michael's alcohol mixture has been fermenting for five days. Now it must be distilled to create fuel for the airboat's engine. Okay. Looking over the 20 gallons of our fermenting alcohol, I'm not exactly sure how many nights it's going to take me to distill it. I'm guessing somewhere between five and seven, maybe as little as four. It only makes logical sense to work at night. It's so hot here lately, and I'm worried about losing my alcohol to evaporation. I keep thinking to myself about legendary sword makers in Japan who used to forge the same sword for three days straight without food or drink. If I can distill this gas in over the next couple of days and get it done, then uh, I'm willing to do that. Drop right into a fire, it should flare up just like alcohol. Michael, that's strong. That, that is proof. boozy. Michael has created an alcohol still entirely out of salvage materials, which is going to provide the fuel that will get us out of here. I'm proud of my still. It's my biggest contribution to the colony. I sometimes feel like I'm a second class citizen or like I'm a second extra set of hands. So if I can really make a contribution, then maybe it will up my value in their eyes.